police. Witnesses describe hearing those gunshots and running and ducking for cover. I wasn't processing and then the shots got closer. So I saw some of my coworkers bend down and hide and I thought this is real. Police say Lagan used tools to cut through a fence to get inside of this park. Officers who were working at the Garlic Festival confronting him in about a minute and shooting and killing him. There was on our bus a young woman, eight months pregnant. She was near the shooter. Two feet away from Two that. feet. Shots. Yes, shots. She saw the dirt go up. She saw um, a man uh, being hit. She saw his legs go up and she ran and she was eight months pregnant. Also, there were two children without their parents where the father, there were phones in the bus, etc. The father saw the active shooter and saw him, two people get shot dead. We all panicked, dropped everything we did and ran with them, got in, got in our trucks, jumped in with uh, jumped in with whoever we can jump in with and people jumped in the back of our truck and we got out of there. How many shots? Oh, oh, it's, uh, 30, 50. Yeah, it's quite a few. It almost, it, it hesitated like he reloaded. It sounded like he reloaded because it stopped and then it went again. And you talked to somebody who saw the shooter, what they said? Yes. Um, she said that he was all in fatigues and um, he had a machine gun and he was just shooting everybody, randomly shooting. We heard it distinctly. I just didn't recognize it the first round. The second time I did, they were getting closer. So I just started running. I left everything. It, I ran. It was, uh, it was kind of like it started and there was a burst and then it kind of stopped for about five, ten seconds. Almost like it was like a reload and then it just started again. It was unreal. It's like what you see when you when you see this happen in other places, you think that can never happen to us. You know, we were standing there, we're in the restroom, we walk out, I turn I literally turn like this and he's standing right there with this rifle. He's getting ready to put the put the bullets in it and he just starts shooting. He's walking towards the tent where we were working. My boss, her husband, they both got shot. They're in the hospital right now. They're in surgery still. I have no idea what's going on with them. Their little boy, my granddaughter was both in the tent at the same time. My my granddaughter grabbed, she's 10, she grabbed him and put him under the box and she goes, I saw his face, mom, grandma. She says, I saw him. And I, she goes, he looked at me, he started to come that way. She goes, I just hid under the box. I didn't know what to do. What an absolute. Uh, it was just a crazy day yesterday, you say. Uh, you seem, first of all, you seem like you're in like amazing spirits, but. Yeah, I'm, I'm blessed. I am blessed to be alive right now. God's hand was washing over me. Uh, I went to the doctors, they, Checked me out and said I got grazed by seven, to, by five to seven different bullets, and two of them were in my upper back area. Um, there was one that went through the fat and right out, and my lower right, on my right thigh, and right above that one went through. Um, not gonna go through, cut through the, all the skin and a little layer of uh, fat as well, but wasn't a through and through. It just kind of like grazed me enough to really leave a little wound, and then I got grazed a couple times. I got grazed one time in this back leg, one time on my arm. And um, then I got a bunch of shrapnel in my left leg, uh, my left calf, um, some in my right calf, and a little bit in my butt area. <laughs> and for all that, they only give you one push. Um, well, so, so the problem is, I the fact that I got hit in my upper right, um, if I use a second crutch, it hurts my wound up here. And if I actually just put all my weight on one leg, because my left leg has more shrapnel, and my right leg actually has the, well, the bullet actually wounded me pretty well. So no matter what leg I put weight on, it just hurts. So I try not to put all the weight on one leg. I kind of like use the one crush to brace myself up and try to put the weight through two different ones. Can you just, uh, can you just bring us back? Can you just tell us like, what, what, was, what, was, what happened when we were through the your So I'm not sure exactly who was the first person to see him, but I remember seeing him walking up from the fence line. He just kind of appeared out of nowhere. He shot once and it looked like the gun got the gun got jammed because he started coughing at about three or four more times and then he brought it back up and started shooting automatic fire into the crowds. He started with like the stage section and then he worked his way to the left to like where the kids were and then towards where we were sitting behind the booth, the food booth. What was going through your mind and how that this was happening? The first thing I did was jump on. This is actually my good friend, like a sister to me. Her name is Sarah. 
I jumped on her and got her out of the way and then she crawled to safety and I ran out of there and that when I started running that's when I got grazed in my upper back and on my arm and I just heard bullets flying past me and um, also before I jumped on her right when I jumped up and tried to land on her that's when I felt the bullets hit my legs I just felt heat just a lot of heat on my legs and I, at that point, I was pretty sure that I was hit, and I just knew that I couldn't worry about that at the moment because I needed to get out of there if I wanted to save my life. It looked like he was just firing into the biggest bunch of people he could find. So, in, in that moment when you saw that, what did you think? I was just going, holy crap. It was pretty hectic. Uh, like I said, when, when the shots started going off, I grabbed her and we kind of ushered a couple people in our group. My dad started his truck up, pulled around the corner, and uh, my mom actually ran into the trailer with a, with a group of people that were running from the direction of the gunshots and they had said they had seen the guy. Um, so it was just really hectic. Just trying to get my mom, my dad, everybody together. And we ended up kind of just getting in the trucks and driving out. It just started popping off like fireworks. It sounded like firecrackers. I, that's what I thought it was. I had no idea until he grabbed me and he started pulling me and telling me, that's, that's gunfire. We need to get out of here, go, run. Oh, it was a lot. I don't know. Yeah. 40, between 50. 30 and 50. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to count, but there was a lot of gunfire. Go ahead. It started and there was a burst and then it kind of stopped for about five, ten seconds. Almost like it was like a reload and then it just started again. And, and then after that, there was just so many people running. We ran, me and Melanie, we worked at the Chevy display, we heard it, and um, the first time I thought it was fireworks, and the second time someone um, from Ariat said, get down, active shooter, and I saw my peers go down, and we all started running, and we were pretty, we heard it distinctly, I just didn't recognize it the first round, the second time I did, they were getting closer, so I just started running, I left everything. I ran. The table in the front, right behind me, where the, the shooting started. And um, when we, the little kid asked me, was there fireworks? It's almost six o'clock. Then we all looked back. And then wasn't no fireworks. Then I guess somebody got shot. Definitely, the crowd went crazy. And then we heard the first, the sound like an AK, a nine millimeter, another AK. It was like three guns. It sounded like. And then everybody ran. When we ran, we got on the ground. I didn't know the shooter that close to me. My niece just told me that one of the ladies who was a Mexican lady ne next to us got, had, got shot in the neck. But I, we, had, we put about a bunch of kids on the ground, lady with babies on the ground. And then uh, we tried to get up and go again after five seconds, then the, then the shooting started again. I didn't see him shooting, but, I, but from what I hear, he was over there by my tent. So when we, we was in the front of the tent. And when he's shooting, he just went all forward. So I didn't have time to look back and see what was him. I was just trying to save some kids. Me and Chico here, we were cleaning. We were working in the vendor area. We heard pop, pop, pop. And I said some idiot firing off firecrackers. About what, Chico, about a minute later, we heard pop, pop, pop. And then I saw the guy running with the gun, shooting at the crowd, watching the concert. I saw the smoke come off the gun, and then he backed off. I turned towards us. We split. I ran down the vendor area telling everybody to get out. My cousins got shot in the leg. I saw an active shooter just start spraying down everybody. He, he started like he came up with a full vest, like full bulletproof vest, um, camo type pants, a hat, and 
basically he had the look of a police officer and uh, I think he had an M4, M5, um, an automatic weapon and just started and he just started like shooting everybody. Um, a lot of our family was there and um, well I guess he, he he only got one of my family members thankfully but but we were right like we were really close like there was a play area my cousins were there my brother was there and thankfully he didn't start shooting there first but but he's yeah he's, he he had the intent to kill i was here with my friend uh he had a booth here we heard some kind of you know popping we all thought it was, we thought it was fireworks honestly uh, and then we seen a flood of people running once we got it confirmed we uh took some people back to our house and now, uh, from what we're hearing, you know, it's pretty crazy to see something like this happen in a small town like Gilroy. I'm helping people get home, dude. You know, honestly, um, me and my buddy, we live here. You know, we're close. We know my family's safe. We know his family's safe. We're just trying to do the same for other families, dude. We know they're stuck here. If we can help them get to them without them having to come down here, you know, it's what it's all about. You got to be, uh, you know, kind to one another, you know, help each other out in these situations. Um, I wasn't aware of what happened when it happened, so I work in the children's center at the far end of the park, and we just had pure chaos going through, and heard that there was a shooter. Wasn't sure it was true or not, but because I have children in my area, I just made sure my vendors got the kids out and safe, and were with their parents and out of the park. <laughs> oh. That's a good thing you said, okay? At Gavilan College, just three miles away from the Gilroy Garlic Festival, this was the place of reunification for those who ran from and witnessed Sunday shooting. He was real close when I seen him put in the clip. Cheryl Lowe and Candace Marquez were vendors at the festival. They said they heard the shots and went to check on their children. That's when they discovered their boss and her husband were two of the 12 injured. He got shot twice in the leg and once in the arm and she got shot in the leg. Her whole calf is got shot. Then the next thing I know, I turned around and they, they had killed the shooter. Gilroy Police Chief Scott Smith, he said one of his officers shot the gunman within a minute of him firing the first shots. Shots vendor David Davies thought were firecrackers. We just laid bet between the fires to the side and just laid on top of our son and tried to be completely out of vision. You don't know where the bullets are going or what's going on, but we heard probably a hundred shots. My granddaughter could have got killed. Her son could have got killed. You know, it's a random act of violence, which I don't understand. And back here live, these two women are just getting out of the Gilroy Garlic Festival. Tell me, were you working the festival or were you attending? We were working the festival. So tell me what happened. Well, we were about to start our shift and we thought we heard firecrackers. And so the other people were just sitting there waiting for our shift to begin and it stopped. And then we heard some more firecrackers in a different area. And then we start seeing everybody run. Yeah. And then we were, we said, oh my gosh, people are running, this is something. Then we had security, armed security there too. And then they just got all of us and we went inside the trailer and hunkered down for quite a while. And then um, we still had we more duty. And that we were, well, the, we volunteered for the money counting of the festival. So we were at the financial trailer, so we had police um, guards already, you know, to block anybody else from going in except qualified volunteers or approved volunteers, I should say. So we were waiting to start our shift and that's when we heard all of a sudden, we thought it was fireworks. And then that's when we realized afterwards when people started running, we're like, this is, no, it's gunfire. And so the EMTs and the armed security, we were telling them, we said, no, it's gunfire. And then they rounded us all up. They got us in the trailer. They got us down on the ground. They said, stay there. And then the radios, they were talking on the radios and everything else. So we've just been there since, what, 5.30. So you've been in the trailer since 5.30. Since 5:30. How terrifying was the situation? Well, we prayed. Yeah, we prayed, uh, we like prayed a lot. Um, <laughs> But it I felt scary. that we were safe there, though. Yeah. I, I felt that we were safe. But we had some other people, uh, children or young adults, uh, the other volunteers come in who had seen a lot and were just right. terrified. Yeah. Just was, terrified. So. Yeah. Understandably. Well, I'm so glad that you're safe. And thank you for taking the time sure. to talk with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you're finally able to go home to your yeah, families. Yeah, thank, you. thank you very much, ladies. We appreciate it thank so you. much. Thank you. Tell us what happened. Uh, we're just working and then, um, you know, just heard a shot and then um, kind of like we weren't sure what, what was it. And then um, right after, you know, 
a bunch of shots, and it was just like, out of nowhere, I felt something in my leg, and, you know, just um, kind of threw ourselves to the ground, and then um, after that, it was just like, it, I, it started to hurt more and more, and it's just, you know, I noticed I was bleeding, my sock was ripped, and, you know, it's, it hurts really bad right now, so. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad you're okay. Can you, did you get medical attention? Yeah, yeah, they, 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 they treated me. So the bullet grazed your leg? Um, I'm not sure if it grazed or bounced off. I'm, no, I'm not 100% sure, but you know, I know something hit me. And sir, can you tell us where were you at the time when, when you were hit and uh, did you get, did you see the gunman? Um, no, I didn't see him. Um, uh, we were by the information booth. Like kind of in the middle of uh, where food and the kind of all the food was at, pretty much in the middle. That's where we were at. Can you show us your leg, sir? What? Oh, it's all. So they bandaged it up. It hit your. It hit your ankle. Yeah. Okay. And obviously, this was such a close call. Can you? You must feel pretty fortunate. How, how are you feeling tonight? Um, just happy to be alive and being able to go back to my family. That's all I want to do right now, just go back to my family. Yo como vi a mi sobrina que estaba en el brincolín, yo me eché a correr con ella y la abracé y eché a correrme. Pero ya después ya no vi dónde para dónde se fue mi niña. Y cuando nos hablaron ya nos dijeron que estaba herida de su pierna. Ahorita cuál es su condición actualmente? Ahorita está bien. Está estable. ¿Cuánto tiempo pasó desde que se enteró de, o sea, de, 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 desde fue... que se separaron? Como fue minutos nomás, como unos 10 minutos más o menos. Pero este, nos sentíamos desesperados porque no la encontrábamos. A ella y a mi otra niña de 10 años. ¿Y de cuándo la escuchamos? Sí, porque estaba enfrente de nosotros. Nosotros estábamos sentados y, ella, y él estaba enfrente de nosotros. Cuando yo me eché a correr fue cuando él, él agarró sus balas de su short y empezó a, a poner más balas en el rifle me eché por ello con mi, por mi sobrina al brincolín porque él estaba a un lado del brincolín. ¿Dijo algo? O sea, Nada. ¿Alguna expresión? En Nada. Nada. Oye, ¿qué te dijo tu hija? ¿Qué te dijo tu hija hoy? Cuando la viste. ¿Qué te ha dicho tu hija? Está bien, está bien. Ya está estable. Sí, ya está estable. ¿Asustada? Todo? Sí, un poquito. Toda. Tell me about what you saw. Um, okay, so our me and my friends, we were like sitting in the food court area where there's a big tent and there's like benches and some there's little vendors around. Yeah, there's a mid in the middle of all these food vendors. There was like a concert area also, and then like a kids like bouncy house. Right. And um, then we got up and we were like, let's go buy some olive oil and then head out. And we started walking towards like where the exit was, and we we're still like maybe like two, three hundred feet maybe like 500 feet away from the exit or something. Yeah. And then we were standing, me and my friend Gray back here, we were standing by like, um, by this truck and like we hear fireworks, what sounded like fireworks. And I see like flashes, like gun flashes, I guess, what they were like looking back on it, but it was flashes and then like things like were ricocheting off the ground. And then um, we felt, we like uh, heard the, the, the truck in front of us get hit by bullets like three or four times and then that's when my friend Gray was like those are not fireworks let's run and then we just started running and we it. yeah then the like festival the volunteers and like the festival or whoever was working it were just kind of like pulling every like just getting people out and then they had parking shuttles because the parking lot was like 10 minutes from the festival so they had shuttled people there and the shuttles were waiting for the festival had ended so they were throwing people into shuttles and we were one of like the second buses to get out and then they're just like like throwing people into buses and the police who had been like on scene for the festival anyway were like running back in um but the police hadn't arrived on the scene yet and we probably heard like I don't even know how many shots we heard. Dozen. Yeah. It was dozens. It was dozens of shots. I would say it was roughly about a magazine and a half to our herd. So probably uh, It was continuous as we were running. Yeah, so we were running and initial, running. A 15 initial shots, about four bullets hit the truck right in front of us, which is, everyone was like, is that fireworks? I'm like, no, dude, run. So we started running, and, and it kept happening. 
but it, it stopped as we were about halfway up. Once everybody really started running, the police started going that way. The, the shooting ceased. Yeah, we didn't hear it anymore. Yeah, and uh, once we got into the parking lot, there was no more. You know, no yeah, more. it was crazy. Was like the the volunteers, like a lot of volunteers were children. Like they were kids yeah, or they teenagers. Were really young. Um, some of them could have been like twelve or thirteen, and yeah. they had no idea. And they're just standing there at the parking lot, like. They didn't even really know what was going on. And then everyone was just kind of like trying to get out and people were really kind of losing it, obviously. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to clarify what you said before about the, the shots. You said you heard about 15 shots? Um, easily 15. Uh, yeah, I would yeah. say even like we heard like initial shots when we were there. Yeah. We were, everyone was kind of just like, the you first know, dozen out. came out, and we were like, like people were, we started running. Yeah, we were like parallel, and then they the were shooter, still going on. But we we could hear the shots, but we didn't see where they were coming from. Like she saw flashes, but none of us saw the shooter. Yeah, because the truck was in front of me and a bunch of tents and stuff like that. So yeah. I couldn't see like I couldn't see who was um, shooting, and I didn't really care to. I was just about, I was about we, running. Yeah, we kind of heard. Of it. It, like I didn't even know to start running until I saw other people running and then we could still hear the shots and then like as we were getting to the buses like getting on the buses we heard that we didn't hear the shots anymore um and that's when like we saw like the officers who had been there like running in and then as we were going out we saw probably 30 or 40 police cars like coming down as we were driving out of Gilroy off the ground out all right, so forgive me, Just, I just want to clarify. So you heard about, like, you'd say at least 15 shots, and then yeah, you heard yeah. shots as you were leaving, but you, the shots stopped at some point? Yes. Yeah, the yeah. shots stopped at some point. We were, like, already out of, like, the festival grounds. We were, like, on the bus. And tell me a little bit more like about... Solid, it was a solid flurry of rounds, and then it ceased. It yeah. was like he maybe emptied two magazines, or like I said, a, a magazine and a half, and then it stopped. So I don't know what happened at that point. Gotcha. And in terms of the succession of fire, how fast was it? Um, um, about as about as fast as one can pull a trigger on a pistol. Yeah. So, was, however long it, you know, it was very it quick. It didn't sound succession. like an automatic. Yeah, it didn't no, sound like No, it wasn't an automatic fire. Yeah. Um, and can you tell me, just describe the, I guess, the panic or the sentiment of everybody? You said that they were running, but what was kind of the feeling amongst every, the crowd? Um, I think people were confused. I think mostly people were confused. I remember when I first heard it, I was looking over to see if there were fireworks or something, and everyone was standing looking over, and then within maybe, like, 10 seconds, everyone was like, let's go, and, it like, was, started running. Yeah, it was everyone terrifying. was scooping up their children, like, some people, like, people were screaming, people were screaming, they didn't know where their like, were, exactly, were for their everyone kids. was screaming, it was just the most, like, sheer panic I've ever felt, especially in that large of a setting. Yeah, it was... And tell me, in terms of, you thought you were just going to a garlic festival, what do you think after experiencing yeah. that? Yeah, that was, like, I was so excited. We had good food there. We had a really great time. And, like, what? at the very end, we were just going, um, like, and, you know, we had high spirits, and all of a sudden this happened. It was just sheer panic. I never been that terrified before. So, especially for something, like, to happen like this at a garlic festival. It just felt like, like it's a family was, event. Yeah. It's, like, local vendors. It's just it was it's a, real a community it, event. Yeah. It shouldn't be like that at all. It was, like, small. It was the the last thing that I expected to happen, and then even even when we were running, it took a few minutes to, like, connect and process, like, yeah, there's an active shooter, yeah. to, like, like, it was, like, maybe halfway until I was up to the exit is when I was, like, I'm hopefully surviving a mass shooting, but I don't know yet, this is a mass yeah. shooting, it was just, we didn't know what was happening, even when we were with one of our other friends, he was going back down to LA, so we were dropping him off, and we were driving back towards the festival. And yeah, we were, kinda, we were like, so scared. We were like, out. we don't want to go, like, again, we were getting gas, like, 40, 40 minutes outside of Gilroy, and, like, we were, we just, like, kept being so fidgety, all three of us individually. We just were, like, looking around. We were, like, you know, like, just in general so scared. I'm so sorry you guys had to deal with that. 
Um, in terms of anything that you've heard, do you know anybody else that was at that festival? Have you been in contact with anybody from that area? No, like we only know our, like, you know, our, there are four of us. We know, yeah. yeah, Mark, he, as we said, he's going back down to L.A., so. Um, but, yeah, just, we were all together yeah, at that moment. we saw, like, what we saw on, like, the, the Citizen app, like, we just saw that there was another seen, shooter. Yeah, we've seen some updates that there was, like, two of them um, that was on the run or something. Yeah, we just saw the police going in. We saw the ambulances. We saw a bunch of police. We heard some, yeah, like, aircrafts. We saw, yeah, we, yeah. There was at least at least 40 police cars that we saw coming down on the highway, and then we saw a few ambulances and the police coming back in, like, because they weren't even, like, they hadn't even gotten there. The festival was, I think, in, like, the more isolated spot, so, like, it, it was kind of, I think, further out. Um, I also wanted to ask, you know, uh, some people were saying that it didn't look like the festival had a plan for if something happened. What did you guys think? Um, from what I saw, like, I think we were all kind of saying they could have checked the bags better. Yeah, but the we, volunteers yeah. were really, like, they were getting people on the bus. They, yeah. I mean, they were, they they were, were really volunteers. Fast and they some weren't panicking. Were, and they weren't, yeah, like, some of them were teenagers. Yeah, and they, they were, were young like, people. They were very, like, people out. normal people who weren't probably weren't very like trained in that but they were really good about it they weren't panicking they weren't screaming they were just yeah, like all right everyone get on this bus here right now there was Let's one go. one volunteer who was like an older man maybe in his like mid 40s or 50s and he was running back to running back towards as the shots were firing trying to get people to go back out and guiding them to the bus mm -hmm. and that i mean like the bus drivers took their time i guess but they were also they were staying really calm they were right. getting us out in terms of prevention though like the security i would say like we all had noticed that we were you know lining up to like get our bags checked in and we would open our bags maybe two inches and they would be like okay go in and like they really didn't look through it so that was something that we actually like mentioned and like said like with each other and we didn't think it would lead to something like this you know but you know Overall, I think that with what happened and what the cards that we were dealt, like, I think the people there were really helpful. Yeah, I think especially with a lot of the people who were working the festival being volunteers, the response that, like, I mean, the natural human response is to get out of the situation and mm -hmm. the fact that, like, they were going back in and making sure that other people were okay, mm -hmm. like, I mean, taking their volunteer duties way more seriously than yeah. I think a lot of us would in that situation like i wasn't running back to guide people out i didn't know what was going on but like still yeah and they like i think that the, they at least were they were trying i don't know yeah. how well organized it was on a larger scale i can't really speak to that but like yeah. they were from what we could tell they were doing the best that they could so you did notice that perhaps so you did notice that they were checking bags but you didn't think that they were doing a very thorough job yeah, yeah. I, I would say so. I think, That's something yeah. that we have, you know, mentioned to each other earlier in the it day. It just seemed that they were, like, kind of, like, you know, it's the festival. Like, yeah, but in this, in, like, you know, to their credit, it was a garlic festival. It's, you know, it's not, <laughs> not something that you fun. think that, yeah. like, yeah. you know, but it's a festival with, like, a bunch of kids, a bunch of families, a bunch of older people as well, like, just everyone from the community. Um, I wouldn't say, like, anyone would expect this, you know. Yeah. Yeah really unexpected it was unexpected and confusing like the way i overwhelmingly felt about it and obviously it's scary we just felt right. kind of like helpless a bit in the exactly. um and do you guys all live in oakland um uh gray here jeremy he lives in wanna creek we're dropping him off right now but yeah me and emily we live together in oakland okay can you actually um show me close up the uh paint that you have on your cheek, the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's... It's a garlic. It's, it's a garlic, garlic little garlic thing. Gold. You want to see Emily's? Sure. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that feels yeah. kind of like... It feels like super it's weird to have this on yeah. right now. Yeah. As we were running... <laughs> as we were running, uh, too, we had these, like, very ridiculous garlic hats that had little, like, straw yeah. coming out of the top that, like, were shaped like clubs of garlic. And me and Emily were just looking at each other like, this is... This is like oh, yeah. the, the, the like um, despair 
what you hear is just crazy, you know, like it's, it like almost doesn't match up, you know, it's just this fun little festival, with like face paint and like weird hats going on and like we're running for our life. And I know it's really fresh right now, but is this going to stick with you guys? Yeah, it, this is definitely something that is going to stick with me. Um, yeah, I have friends that were in shootings before, so like, uh, like uh, I never like thought it would get this close, but you know, it did. Yeah, I think that's like we. Yeah, I just didn't expect it. You never think that it's going to be you. I think like the sense of like invincibility, especially like we're young, like it's yeah, not yeah. what we're thinking about, and then kind of like. No one yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, and it just felt like we were like out in Gilroy. Like, it's a small town. It was a community event, and just it's really at a left field. Yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you guys? Um, Emily is twenty-three. I'm twenty-four, and um, I'm thirty. All right. All right, guys, is there anything that you want to say that I haven't asked you about? Um, yeah, I really no. Just, I hope that to anyone that, like, was injured or, I don't know, died. I hopefully no one died in the shooting, but I hope that their families are okay. I hope, yeah, I yeah, mean, just hope everyone's like, okay. Something that people and we hope do, to be yeah. okay, too. Yeah. I really appreciate your guys' time and, uh, you know, take some time to take care of yourself, all right? It sounds like it would be a situation for PTSD for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I did want to ask you, though, um, you said that the vehicle in, in, near you was hit. Did you see bullet holes? Did you see it actually hit? We were on the other side of mm -hmm. the truck, but we saw, like, Gray, Jeremy back well, there. Well, was... I mean, my man, I'm from Alabama, right? So, like, I've, I've shot guns into metal cans and stuff. It definitely sounded the same. And the reason, like, I said, and it was really close to it us. It wasn't so like a rifle at all. Yeah. It was like a pistol or something. You know? Yeah. yeah, I've only been in the bay for like six months, so it's crazy, honestly, to even think that something like that would occur here because yeah. the gun laws are so strict, you know what I mean? Yeah. We didn't see the bullets go in, but we heard it because it was right next to us. Yeah. We were standing on the exact opposite side of the truck, and Greg was actually kind of more towards the front where he could kind of see out of his sideline vision, like the, the other side of the truck. All right. Well, I sure do appreciate your time, and, um, you know, take care, guys. I, Thank I, you. Have a good night.